Oh, looks like we're live. Um, <clears throat> hi, I'm Michael. Um, today I've got a few computers to uh, to work on. Um, one's a, a desktop computer. I'm going to be putting in a um, let's see, Zotac Gaming uh, GeForce uh, RTX um, 3060 Ti graphics card. Um, right now he's got a, an RX uh, 570, and this will be a, a good upgrade for him. Um, another computer I'm going to work on is a laptop, which is over there. It uh, apparently has blue screens um, coming up every time you try and boot it up, and they change every time. So we're going to look at that. But I um, thought we'd start with this desktop. Um, got it plugged in down here on the floor. Um, let me fire it up, and we'll uh, aim a camera at the screen. So I've got it coming on. I'm going to press delete on the keyboard to get it to go into the BIOS. Uh, at the moment I'm waiting on the, the pin um, to get into Windows for the for the client. It's his son, his son's at school. And um, they just forgot to, uh, to write it down for me. But we can go ahead and uh, do the upgrade. Um, you know, put the put the new RAM in and uh, and swap out the graphics card, and then we worry about the other drivers whenever I get the pen. Sorry, I should have my uh, my camera ready to go. Droid OBS, POV. Yeah, that's gonna work. Get this thing on a tripod. Try it again. There we go. Alright. So it's a gigabyte motherboard. Uh, CPU. Um, let's see. Do that. What do we have under favorites? So it's got DDR4 running at 3000 megahertz. Um, looks like 18 timings. Um, where's the CPU information in this thing? System information, it's got to be, right? 11th gen, uh, Core i5, 11.5, or 400F, that's a good processor. Um, and I looked in it, and it, it only has one RAM stick, and um, you can see right here it's 8, uh, eight uh, gigabytes. I'm going to be swapping that out for uh, two sticks of 8 gigabytes for a total of 16. Yeah, let's go ahead and get it turned off. I just hit the power button on it. Right, swap the swap the camera over to a head mount display. mouse and keyboard dongles. set correctly. Well, anyway. Non, uh, non captive screws. And I just slid off. Alright, so, thumb screws. Huh, and they put the RAM stick in the 
slot furthest from the CPU. Usually you would put a single RAM stick in the second and fourth slots. It may not may not matter with a, a single dim stick. A pacer. Hmm. So I got for them some team group uh, 3600 megahertz running at CL18. Hey, little boy. It's uh, it's pretty much a standard thing if you have um, if you have two sticks of RAM to put them in the second and fourth slots and it has to do with um, them being recognized properly for um, going into dual channel mode. And dual channel mode means that the bandwidth of the RAM, if you have, if the system has the ability to run them in dual channel, what it does is it kind of combines the bandwidth. So you get uh, a considerable speed boost in your RAM. You can check the motherboard manual to be sure. Um, but for at this point for DDR4, second and fourth are pretty much the standard for AMD and uh, Intel motherboards. So I did that pretty quick. Uh, what you're looking for when you put in RAM is RAM in is um, a, a slot, I'm sorry, a notch, slightly off center, which matches up with a bit of plastic in the center of the slot, so you can't put them in backwards. So I just flipped that around. You put the the RAM in the guides on either side. Just give it a good push. And there it goes. So, uh, graphics card. Take out its power. So it's a four pin, um, I'm sorry, it's this uh, eight pin power. It's six plus two pins, and these are actually together really well. These can be slid off so you can have just a six pin if you need it. And, uh, let's see. I think this just needs an 8 pin, so we should be fine for cabling. Okay, graphics card is held in with two screws. Hey, Chris, good morning. <laughs> Zulu, yeah, you made it. I, this is a pretty early stream for me. I generally get started closer to uh, to noon. Okay, it's got a 500 gigabyte solid state drive right here on the on the motherboard. That's great. Um, to get the graphics card out, you have to press down a little um, ejection piece of plastic here. You kind of push down on it. Usually it's a little bit wider than this. Push down on it as you wiggle the graphics card, but man, that is really, it's not sticking out very much. This graphics card has a, a pretty large back plate here, which is unusual. I'll try doing it with this. I'm pushing pretty hard. Wow. Not wanting to budge. There it goes. Just needed a little extra oomph. Yeah, it's out. Yeah, so it's an XFX RX 570. It's a good card. It's just this new one's going to be better. Hey Zulu, what's up? Well, um, we're taking some, some tape off the bottom of the computer. It happens. Um, upgrading RAM, uh, going from a single stick of 8 gigabytes to a, a dual channel, um, two sticks of 8 gigabytes. Also a little bit faster RAM. 
the, the RAM stick that was in there was a 3000 megahertz. This is 3600 megahertz. Cool bag. It's kind of iridescent, I guess you would call that. It's most likely got some stickers in there too. There's no cover over the over the slot or over the uh, the connector. That's fine. Anything to peel? Doesn't look like it. And yeah, single six plus two pin is what it needs. So when you uh, go to put in a graphics card, you put the um, the faceplate just to the left of the motherboard's edge, but not on the outside of the case. Get it right over the slot. wiggle just about ready to go in you just push it yeah put the screws back in so it's an I buy power computer I've seen quite a few of these. They generally are, you know, decently cable managed. And, you know, reasonably nice looking motherboard, standard, you know, nothing unusual. It's a B560DS3HAC which I think that's a gigabyte. So if we did need an extra um, 6 or 6 plus 2 pin for 8, there's another one here. So we could put in a, uh, a higher uh, power consuming graphics card. How much is uh, dependent on the, the wattage of the power supply, which I don't know. I did not look. But should be okay. Now, if we fire it up and it doesn't work, or if we fire it up and uh, we lose video when we try to play a game, then I'll know I was wrong. But let's have um, let's do the height of arrogance and put the case uh, side on before <laughs> we even power it on. It's gonna work, right? RX 570 is a 4 gigabyte card. I think, <clears throat> I'm not sure about that. There, I think there's variations. Uh, this one's an 8 gigabyte. So the amount of um, uh, RAM on the card is the same. It's just the uh, the chip on a 3060 Ti is just so much better. The um, So the, the client is uh, a father and his son. His son wanted a 3050 uh, upgrade. I looked at that, and the difference between a RX um, 570 and a 3050 was almost nothing as far as performance goes. So it wouldn't have made sense to spend the money on that or to pay me to do it because the uh, the increase in performance would be, I think it was like 5 or 10 percent, which is not, uh, not a good use of money. talked to the dad and he said yeah we can spend more so I think we um, I think we spent 420 ish dollars on this uh, this trash this graphics card or he did it to show up on the, the screen right here in front of me. I 
haven't got video yet. Ah, here it comes. Oh, and I forgot to stop it from booting into Windows. So once we get the, the PIN number from the client, who's going to get it from his son, who's at school right now, we can log in and update the drivers and take off the, the Radeon drivers and all that stuff. But in the meantime, let's get it shut down. Go back into the BIOS. All right, restarting. Hey, Jerry. The brand of the new GPU is a Zotac. <laughs> Game replaces, bruh. The DS3H series, for some reasons, are almost always look, overlooked, Zulu says. I mostly buy um, Asus, um, just by choice. Um, I've had really good results with them just over the years. Um, but, you know, Gigabyte's good too, you know? Um, okay, so it... Oh, this is interesting. I, I was kind of expecting this to, to go back to the default. It's stuck on profile one for XMP, which means it got the uh, the correct timings and everything from the uh, and the speeds information from the uh, a chip on the on the RAM, and it's already running at 3,600 megahertz. Uh, and there's the 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the graphics card's all obviously working because we got video on the screen. Um, okay, so at this point we're just waiting to get the uh, the pin number from the client. I'll have to ask them what they want to do with their old graphics card. I mean, it's a nice graphics card. It's just their new one's better. Maybe they have something for it. If not, I have an idea. I have a friend that uh, could really use a, uh, a decent graphics card for doing VR chat, which I think that one might be able to handle it. Yeah, Zulu, Asus, and Gigabyte. I mean, they're they're both good choices, and between that, you can usually find something reasonably priced with the features you want and all that stuff. Um, well, let's I guess just turn this off for now. I just hit the power button, and uh, let's see. Let's let's check out this laptop. It's an Acer laptop, and it's in the Nitro series. And what he told me is that when you power it on, it blue screens, and that the errors are different every time. Like the code or the, uh, the exact error message is different. Oh, there's power. Okay, little pretty much gaming laptop. 10th gen, it's called a Nitro 5. Um, where she be? Okay, powering on, let's see what happens. Yep, Windows 11, pin number. Let me see if I have it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have the pin number for the desktop computer.
Okay, pin number. We got for the laptop. Yes, we're in. Good. Okay, we got the pin numbers we need. All right, well, let's stick with this one. It's not blue screened yet. Y'all can't see it, but... Pretty sure he said as soon as it uh, even starts to boot into Windows, it was blue screening, but it, it's not doing that for me at the moment. So yeah, there's their there's their desktop. Yeah, it's mainly a gaming computer. Um, looks like they might do some other stuff, but there's uh, there's a lot of gaming stuff. All right, start. Actually, let's right click. Right click. We're gonna go to Event Viewer and see if we can find a, a code um, that tells us more about the blue screens that have been happening. All right, so custom view. You drop it down to administrative events and that will get you the uh, the important stuff so anything that says error or warning um, error more so than warning is what you want to pay attention to kernel event tracing windows remediation failed to start hmm That's a message about another computer on the network having the same name. That's that's okay. It's not okay, but it, it fixes itself pretty much. I'm not seeing like the the, the usual like full on blue screen type of um, errors. And he hasn't used this computer in a while. These are back from the uh, the third. It's the sixteenth now. So these happen so far. There's a time service warning. DNS, it had trouble. Oh, it's because it's not connected to Wi-Fi. Um, kernel tracking event. I don't think I've seen this one before. Um, it says Windows Microsoft.Windows.Remediation failed to start the following error. I'm going to do a copy and we're going to paste that into a Google search as soon as we connect it to the internet Jazz says, I have a ThinkPad X201i that want to install Yosemite on it. Uh, Yosemite like a Mac operating system? I have no freaking idea. Good luck with that. That does happen quite a bit, Zulu. Um, people will tell me something's happening at their house, and I, I get it over here, and it doesn't happen. It usually means that um, the problem is at their house. Something they've got connected at their house. Something there. Um, but occasionally it's just like um, if a computer won't turn on and it's a desktop computer especially, if they like move it into their car, they, they bounce it around town getting it to me, I move it in here and plug it in and it works, chances are it's just a slightly loose component that got jostled around just enough to get put back into a place well enough to work. And in that case, I open them up and just redo all the connections, just like take them out, put them back in real quick. Uh, okay. Paste. Uh, P 
people talking about they are getting this in their event viewer. The Windows Club. Let's see what the Windows Club has to say about it. Fails when a process fails to start. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not seeing the standard like blue screen. Um, oh, here we go. Memory management. Stop code memory management just happened. Dion Knight. Oh, we're working on computers. You, you know what I do. If you if you've watched me before, that's pretty much what I do. Last week when we played uh, when I played GTA Five for like ten minutes, I got a copyright strike, and apparently it was a song on the radio in the car as I was driving out to the mission. So I'm I'm disputing that because it's GTA Five. You know, people show GTA Five all the time, and they're not demonetized. I did see an option though um, in uh, in the studio, the YouTube studio, to possibly mute that part of the video so the you know the the 30 seconds the song was playing i could just go back and mute the video and then it would be okay again yeah a gamer plays it that's actually what i'm going to do i'm just going to turn off the radio in gta 5 there's there's no no reason for the radio to be playing so ordinarily when it blue when it blue screens like this uh computer will restart just on its own this is apparently not doing that i don't think control delete's going to do it no Let's try holding down the power button. But I'm interested um, on going back into Windows, into the Event Viewer, and seeing um, if it uh, recorded the error, and also if the error changes. He said the error changes. This time it was memory management. I'm I'm curious to see what the next one will be. Okay, getting back in. I think this is the right one. Yeah. All right. Right click and start in Windows 11 and Event Viewer. Custom View, Administrative Events, Full Screen, or not Full Screen, but Maximized. Uh, bug check, good. I actually have a bug check. And there is something about a memory dump in Windows backslash memory dump. Okay. I actually haven't looked at a, a memory dump in a long time. Um, last time I did, it was like, it was called like BSOD viewer or something like that. BSUD viewer. Blue screen. Oh, from Bleeping Computer. Okay, I think this is the one that I've used before. Blue screen view from Bleeping Computer. And. Okay, let's get past the ad. Here it comes. Okay, so it's a, it's a zip file. I'm going to open it up and extract it, and we'll run it and try and point it at that file. All right, extract all. And by the way, you don't need a, a unzipping program in, in Windows, really any version of Windows for the last several years. So it's built in. Um, you just you highlight a zip file, and at the top there's options to extract it. No need for WinZip. Blue screen view. Now watch it blue screen while we're trying to view it. All right, memory management, NTOS, NTOS kernel.exe. Uh, bug check code, 
memory management. Okay, there was another one I just didn't see. System thread ex um, exception not handled. All right. Well, um, what do you think? My 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 inclination is to open it up and reseat the RAM sticks. If it's got two, if it's got one, you know, do the one. Then we try the one at a time. That kind of stuff. Zulu, if, if it's getting random error messages, the first thing I would do is check the RAM. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Zulu uh, agrees. Let's get this thing shut down. So the question is, how do you open it up? It looks like the keyboard is integrated into the palm rest, which usually means... Um, taking all the screws out of the bottom and then prying the bottom off in order to get to uh, to the internals But we'll see It's an Acer computer, and I'm pretty sure they don't have user manuals for them. So We're reliant on other people who on YouTube who have taken videos opening them and maybe some step-by-step uh, -step instructions made by somebody some end-user but Yeah. I'm just checking. Yeah, there's screws around and it looks like this bottom piece is going to pop off. Is that a gap? Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's take all the screws out of the bottom. <laughs> yep, reseat RAM, replace RAM. Hopefully that's it. If it's not the RAM, it's it, it would come back to probably a motherboard issue. And that would be a bummer because usually motherboards on laptops like this are super expensive. Is my view too high? Maybe better. All right, let's reach under here and try pulling up. Yep. Okay. So it looks like it's wanting to bring this entire back piece up. Just getting in there with my fingers and my fingernails and pulling. Uh, just doesn't want to release. There it goes. Aha. There's RAM. There's two of them. Awesome. Let's try a, a straightforward uh, reseat. If you want to be like super careful, you can disconnect the battery at this point, which it's right there, why not? It's got a 512 gigabyte solid state drive in it, NVMe from Western Digital. There's the Wi-Fi adapter if you want to upgrade it. Right, battery's out. Um, CPU and graphics card are under one of these. There's the battery. Looks like it's held in with screws. It, it's all very easy to get to. Okay, so we're just reseating the RAM. Did I do this one? Yeah, no, I didn't. So it's just take it out, stick it right back in. So to take it out, you push out on these metal tabs, which allows it to come up at roughly 30 degree angle. Take it out. If you're putting in RAM new, there's a, a notch in the center, slightly off center, that matches up with a bit of plastic there. So you can't put it in backwards, at least not easily. If you really tried, you probably could. But yeah, 30 degree angle, and then push down, and the clips hold it. And, hmm. I don't think we need the bottom on this. I think it'll be fine just like that. There's nothing's gonna fall out of it. And since we don't have the, um, the battery plugged in, we'll need to give it power for sure from the outside. 
And this is just temporary while we test it. And hopefully it doesn't make us wait a long time to blue screen again if it's going to. All right, coming back on. I'm opening up an incognito window. Um, we're going to go to YouTube and we'll just have it playing some music. I usually do lo fi girl. Decent speakers in this thing. Let's turn it down. Uh, let's see. Some junk came out of this thing when I opened it. Some black stuff. Let's leave that there. I'm going to turn the desktop back on. We'll see about updating its drivers while we wait for this thing to possibly blue screen again. video. Ah, thanks everybody for coming and hanging out. Dion Knight says bad memory. Could be. We'll, we'll see. It's not, it's not likely that both sticks are bad, so if, if one's bad, we'll figure that out just by swapping them around. Okay. Uh, keyboard. Pin number. I think that's what I wrote. No, that is not what I wrote. I don't know my own handwriting. There we go. Okay, so the graphics right now are super low resolution, which is why everything is so huge. Um, let's see. Okay, y'all can see the majority of that. Well, actually, let's move this back. Did I give it internet? Yes, I did. Let's close Discord. And chances are that Windows will get the driver update for itself, you know, on its own. But we'll we'll do a, a manual uninstall of the Radeon drivers, and then we'll go get the the most recent version from uh, Nvidia. Um, Got Chrome? Yes. Okay, let's launch Chrome. And let's see. Let's go to NVIDIA.com. Actually, just a Google search for NVIDIA drivers usually takes you to the right spot. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it is a GeForce. It is a 3000 series, a 3060 Ti. We want Windows 11. Game ready driver, good. Search. I just realized I need to mute that uh, that audio before I get copyright struck again for lo-fi girl background music. Okay, so that's downloading. Uh, start. Settings. Apps and apps and features will give us the ability or the right spot to take out the Radeon drivers. AMD Radeon software. Yeah. Let's click on that and uninstall it. So these are the drivers for the old graphics card. They're just not needed on the computer anymore. It wouldn't be a, a huge problem for them to sit there, but they don't need to be there. Uninstall, yes. The laptop hasn't blue screened again yet.
So Zulu says Acer Nitro 5 laptop is supposed to have a GTX 1050Ti in it. Well, I can I can confirm that. I they they uh, they could have multiple different um, um, SKUs with that name. Let's see. So I went to Device Manager. It is a GTX 1650Ti in this one. Processor is a Core i5 10300H. It's a four core with um, hyper threading. Okay, so uninstall successfully. I'm going to tell it to just finish. I don't want to restart right now. Uh, looks like it got rid of the other Radeon software too. There was one right next to it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's gone. Okay, so we can go back and. Ha, it's uh, just now getting getting done downloading the uh, the NVIDIA software. 784 megabytes for the installer. And Lo-Fi Girl is still listening to music. No blue screen so far. Uh, Blackman0604, did you encounter an M.2 SATA, I guess SSD, that doesn't allow you to install Windows on it or even create a partition? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that happens if, uh, if a drive is having problems. Solid state drives fail too. Uh, it's, it's not just a, a hard drive thing that, you know, hard, hard drives fail and solid state drives never fail. They fail too. It, they're less likely to fail, but they do fail. All right, I'm going to do uh, NVIDIA graphics driver. I'm not going to put the GeForce Experience on there because uh, in order to do that, I'd have to log in with an account, and I don't have their account information. Uh, so we'll do custom next and perform a clean install. That's just something I do pretty much every time. Well, Smoke, it's going good. The computers are cooperating. Um, we did a graphics card upgrade on a desktop computer along with a RAM upgrade uh, installing drivers and uh, we had a we've got a Acer Nitro 5 laptop that was blue screening um, and we opened it up and reseated the two RAM sticks and so far it hasn't blue screened but I'm not ready to, to say they're they're both okay then after that um, I've got a an old laptop from a client that needs to be um, taken apart and take her old drive out and I think it's a solid state drive I'll probably just erase it and then possibly reuse it and it may have RAM sticks we could use um, along with maybe a Wi-Fi adapter so the screen went black because it's updating the drivers hopefully yeah that looks better that looks higher resolution and the NVIDIA control panel says it's been installed. That was actually from the Microsoft store that said that. Okay, so that got installed. I'm gonna tell it to, tell it to restart because that's after taking off the Radeon software and installing the the GeForce. We want a want a good restart after that. Would be a good idea. Uh, also, Windows 11 is doing some updates. Um, when I looked before, it said it would take six minutes. We'll see. Anybody want to time it? Lo-fi girl still going good. She's sitting there writing in her. Uh, in her journal. Now the, the the Acer Nitro Five needs updates too to Windows. It's it's wanting to to reboot and do an update.
good coffee. All right, Morgan in. So on this com on the the desktop computer, since we did a graphics card and um, RAM upgrade, we definitely need to stress test it. Um, let's go to Google, and we'll do a search for our usual stress testing stuff. Um, Prime. Oops. Stop loading. Discord's, Discord's trying to start up. Okay, that's fine. All right, try that again. Prime 95 download. GIMPs 64 bit. I got that downloading. Let's go get the furry donut, which is Furmark. Hardware Info 64. The Hardware Info 64 is going to let us uh, see the temperatures and uh, speeds of, uh, of the components. Excuse me. All right. Local US. There we go. All right. Shown in folder. And we will extract. That's Prime 95. Hardware info extracting. And Furmark is uh, executable. I'm just going to run. Uh, uh, Norton Auto Fix. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Nitro 5 laptop has been on long enough for uh, Norton to come up and start doing crap. Maybe premature, but uh, I'm thinking reseating the RAM did it. It's It's been a, a bit since it blue screened, but we'll, we'll keep it going. All right, yes, for a mark, do your thing. All right, so that'll get installed. Next, launch for a mark, and GPU stress test. So it all that program, all this program does is just renders this uh, this furry donut. Okay, um, hardware into 64. Let's run that. Whenever you run hardware in info 64, um, if you just want to look at what I'm going to look at, if you check sensors only, it starts faster. It, it actually shows you lots of information about your computer. Um, if you're interested, uh, it just it just takes longer. And it's like components in it, versions of Windows, versions of programs, and stuff like that. All right, back here, and where's Prime 95? Prime 95.exe. And Windows, Windows will, will usually say this about Prime 95 because it doesn't know what to do with it. It's just trying to keep us safe. But Prime, Prime 95, as long as you get it from that um, that link I got it from, is fine. More info and run anyway. Uh, just stress test and OK. So right now what we're doing is we're maxing out the uh, the stress on the computer, the CPU, the RAM, and the GPU all at the same time. So Hardware Info 64 says that the CPU is running at 82 degrees Celsius. That's a little high. The the cooler on it is just the one that uh, that came I think standard with the. Uh, um, with the CPU, or am I wrong about that? What's what cooler is this? No, it's not. It's an upgraded one. It's just probably not doing as good a job as it could. Yeah, we're up to ninety degrees Celsius. So they could probably use a, diff a different uh, different cooler. Although I may um, I may try once we have a good number here for like the maximum heat that we can get it up to. You know what maximum temperature. We could open the computer back up, um, pull off the cooler, replace the thermal compound, and put it back on and see what uh, what difference that makes. Oh, it blue screened. 
IRQ not less or equal, but it was it was right near the point of um, of overheating, so that that likely made it unstable. Okay, so it's off. I'm going to press the power button while it's at this point, and hopefully it'll turn off. No, not yet. I'll press delete on the keyboard to get it to go in the BIOS. Oh, it did. It finally did turn off. But yeah, let's do that. Uh, Lo-Fi Girl's still good, though. Check her out. So this, this laptop very possibly is good to go. With the exception of me putting the, the bottom back on it. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's go head mounted. Oh, it turned itself back on. Uh, boot failure detected. That's interesting. It's wanting to load optimized defaults. We don't want to do that. So I turn it back off just by pressing the power button. All right. Let's see if we can improve the cooling on this poor thing and see if that makes it not blue screen. Let's see. Lo-fi girl. Let's close you so... Actually, we got to shut you down because we got to reconnect your battery. I have a good feeling about this. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to shut down. I'm going to put the bottom on it. I'm going to stick it over here in the corner uh, or actually probably over there. Um, just playing, uh, playing stuff on YouTube. Okay, so power's off. Disconnect power. Uh, let's get the the battery reconnected. Can't get my fingers in there. Come here. Get you get up here. Laptops are so compact. compared to most desktops. They really crowd this stuff in there. Okay, got it up now. So now we can stick it in there and push it back down. Oh, come on. You know you want to go in there. That's another meme I, I mean I need to, uh, to to get on the board. The, uh, are you too good for your home? That's your home. Go home. Answer me. Which is from a Adam Sandler movie about golf. Which I can't remember the name of it. Okay. Deep cool. Black man zero six zero four. You you, uh, you do you, do you remember it being deep cool when you when I saw it earlier? I did not even pay attention. Uh, so I'm getting the top on first, which I'm assuming is correct. Yeah, looks like it's going back on. So what do you think? Should I go ahead and put the screws in or, or wait till we verify it's not going to blue screen again? I could just leave them right over here set this bad boy over running lo-fi girl happy Gilmore thank you Loboette a couple more clips up front good good yes all right powering on <laughs> battery critically low I wonder if he needs a new battery. We had that thing plugged in for a while and the battery's already clear, critically low. Well, it'd be an easy upgrade. Let's see, I'm gonna set this right over here on Abby's desk.
moves up pretty damn quick. Pin that though. Uh, I think that's right. That's the wrong one. Alright, so back to Lo Fi Girl. Let's try Lo Fi YouTube and see if it figures it out. Yeah. sit there and think about what it's done. Alright, let's get this thing up. We were so close. <laughs> I had to go and stick the case side on. I jinxed myself. Yep, deep cool. Black Man 0604 saw it. Okay. So it looks like four screws. <laughs> Zulu says, yes, yeah, sit over there and think about what you've done. You can't be blue screening all over the place like that. That's right. Okay, I think that's off. Ah, this one's still hanging on for dear life. There we go. Alright, four pin cable. This thing's fairly hot. Thermal compound actually looks pretty good. It's not dried out. And the thing about this is, if we were to just play a game, it probably wouldn't have got that hot. We were put in an absolute worst case scenario on the CPU running Prime 95. But, you know, ideally, under worst case scenario, it shouldn't really get out of the 70s. 60 would be better. And I just realized something. There's a um, there's a back plate that I think fell to the uh, the opposite side of the um, of the uh, the motherboard. So we're gonna have to take the other the other case side off in order to get this back on. But yeah, the thermal compound actually looks really good. Okay. Yeah, so these go through the holes in the motherboard and screw into a back plate, which is now sitting on the uh, the opposite side of the case, or the kind of the back side of the case. So if I lift this up, I'm thinking, yeah, you hear it, did you hear it uh, sliding? Oh wow, that screw is on there, dang. Okay, 
So there's the other case side. Let's see. Let's put it this way. Yep, there it is. Aha. Uh -huh. They didn't. Uh, they didn't take off the uh, the sticky. sticky covers when they installed it. It's not a requirement, it's just it's nice to have these on uh, back plates so that when you take a cooler off they don't just fall. Okay, so sometimes these are like you can put them anyway. Uh, this one it looks like they, they want to have this part right here going over this screw. You all see that? Yeah. So you just stick it on like that, and hopefully it will now stay. Or it won't just completely fall out. Alright. Just in case it does, I won't put the back side off. Alright. So thermal compound. Uh, where's my thermal compound? Aha. I guess I used up my last tube. And this is Arctic Silver 5. Yep, brand new tube. Alright, so it's a uh, it's almost a square, but it's it's got a little bit of a rectangular to it. I'm gonna put that amount right there. And did they change the color of Arctic Silver 5? That looks darker than I remember. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the fan back on. Whenever you're connecting a fan, see those little plastic bits right there? They kind of wrap around a, a plastic bit on the motherboard. So you can't put them in backwards. Or Once again, you can if you really try, but... If it feels right, push. That's what she said. Okay. So just generally over the holes in the back plate. These are like spring loaded, so you have to push them down a little bit as you turn. But hopefully not too hard, otherwise the back plate will fall out. Just like that. Okay, that one's going. Shouldn't be able to fall out at this point. Okay. So opposite corner is down. Okay. Yep. No. Come on. That's on. I'm just getting them started at this point. I'm not actually going to tighten them down until they're all going into the holes. Eh, pop back. You know you won't go in there. Oh, come on. Got it. Okay, so now just matter of tighten them all down. I'll do eight turns each and kind of go diagonal. Tight. Okay. I'll just tighten these down. Let's see. So Zulu says, I don't think it's a limitation of the uh, thermal compound at all. It may just be a crap cooler. I, I paraphrased. <laughs> but he, you may be right. We'll see. It's worth a try. It's free. That's on there good. All right. I'm not going to put the sides back on. We've got enough bad juju going on. We don't need more. And internets. No 
mouse keyboard. That's backwards. Uh, coming back on. You are coming back on, aren't you? Yes, it's very quiet. Yeah, here comes video. Now, switch back to tripod. Oh, also plug my phone in while I've got it on tripod. So it's back to load optimized defaults. I think the BIOS detected the blue screen and it's trying to set things back to like safe settings. Because we did technically overclock the RAM when we put on the profile, but it's an overclock that's supported by the, uh, uh, the memory. So it shouldn't be part of the problem. See, no, I don't need that. I need a different keyboard like this keyboard. Alright, we we don't want to load optimized defaults. We want to enter the BIOS and verify we are on profile one. Yeah, so it's running at 3600 megahertz. You can see it right here. And there's the 16 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah. So we will do F10 to save consider, uh, configuration and exit. Oh, calm down, little smoke. That's what she said is like a is pretty it's a pretty tame, you know, stupid thing to say. But uh, come on. All right. Let's see if I remember which pin is the correct one. I probably won't. I got it. All right, go back. Let's go back and do what we were doing. We were doing oop, downloads. Prime 95. Get that going. Um, hardware in info 64. Sensors only. Close Discord. Okay, and where are we at now? We are now at 77. Seventy-eight. We don't have the graphics card being tested at the moment. Eighty-one. And what I'm looking at is right here. I know that's probably a little small for y'all. Up to eighty-three. Oof, going to 85. Chris, you should disable AVX. I've heard about that. Um, so disabling AVX, I haven't done that before. Is it, uh, I imagine that's a BIOS setting. Getting a better cooler would help. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it's it's not a not a great cooler, but it's in prime to disable AVX. Interesting. Okay. Just as a just as a consistent test, I'm going to leave it the way it is right now. Before it got up to I think 97 degrees C, and it blue screened with a IRQ not a, not less or equal. And what I'm testing here is is whether or not replacing the thermal compound did anything good. So the hottest core is at a, as a, is at 100 degrees C at this point. Yeah, there's the blue screen. Okay. 
So Chris, in in Prime ninety five, there's a section in the uh, in the preferences or settings where you can turn off AVX. I guess we can try that. And it, isn't AVX like um, an instruction set that most most programs don't use anyway, but probably is being really clobbered by uh, Prime ninety five. So the computer turned itself off, and it's coming back on now. Okay, so it's in the starting window that comes up in the lower half. Okay. All right, going back to into the BIOS and F10 and exit. I did not plug in my phone. Poor phone. Or stress test with the profile one off in the BIOS. Yeah, Mose, that's 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 another option. Absolutely. I, but ideally, I would like it to be on so it's actually running at the speed that um, that they're paying for. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Boot failure detected again. Go back to enter the BIOS, F10, and save and exit. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's it. Uh, I don't. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna go into Windows again. Loading optimized defaults would set it back to like the standard like twenty six sixty six though. I don't want to do that at this point. One thing that uh, that could help this is a BIOS upgrade though. All right, back to downloads. Prime 95, run it, disable AVX 512. There's also disable something else. Discord is starting again. Damn, icon moves around so much. There we go, quit Discord. So Chris, do you do you turn them off completely or just the 512 disable all? Okay. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's see what happens. All right, so that's running. Let's go back and run hardware info and check the uh, check the temps. See what's going on. I'm thirsty. Coffee. It's not the most recent. <clears throat> All right, 78 degrees C. 79. I guess another thing we could check in the BIOS. Oh, almost certainly, it's it's the fan on the on the CPU cooler is running as fast as it can when it gets that hot. But um, we can check for a fan curve. Maybe it's set to max out at like 75% um, percent of its full available speed. If we crank that up to 100, maybe that would cool it enough. And I think I started to say this before, but the stress we're putting on it is completely unrealistic. Um, no game will do um, what this is doing. It's uh, Chris, it's a, it's a 11400F, and it blue screened again with a clock watchdog timeout and it did that before um, it got very hot okay 
So I'm thinking go in the BIOS and check out the, um, definitely turn off the uh, the overclocking of the RAM and see if we still have a have an issue. And there's something else, you know, this was brought to me for a graphics card upgrade and a RAM upgrade. I didn't check the system before I, I took it apart and I mean, I made sure it booted up, but I didn't run a stress test on it. I didn't have the pin number at the point, but it's possible um, the blue screening was happening to begin with and the end user thought, oh, I just need a better graphics card and, and more RAM and then the blue screen will stop which it doesn't work that way. Um, so that's another possibility. That's something I could ask the end user. Who's a kid? So I would ask his dad and his dad would, would ask him uh, through his cell phone at school and maybe we get an, op maybe we'd get an answer. But turn it off the BIOS, um, uh, the overclocking of the BIOS for the RAM, turn that off. Um, settings, okay, so smart fan is F6 on the keyboard. Um, CPU is set to go to 100% uh, when it gets a little over 60 degrees C. So it's it's running as fast as it can, doing the best it can. Okay, so we turned that off. Uh, turn that off. We've got BIOS version F4 from June of last year. So a BIOS upgrade could help with this. Um, and the CPU, yeah. So it's an 11400F is the CPU. I'm going to look for a uh, for a BIOS upgrade. Um, F10 and yes. Save and exit. Enter didn't work. Oh, there it goes. Just took it a second. Um, I don't have another cooler on hand. I don't think. No, I don't. But we turned off we turned off the uh, the overclocking of the RAM, so it's probably running at twenty six sixty six um, at the moment. And let's go see if there's a, a BIOS upgrade we can get. One of these days, I'm gonna remember without looking the correct pin number on this. Okay, so clicking start, we're going to do a search for MS Info 32, which is system information, which should list, yeah, the model number of the motherboard, which I said earlier in the stream. Uh, quit out of Discord. Let's see. Incognito, and we will see copy, control C, and right click, paste in. So take that off, just make it a simple search. There we go. So support for a B560DS3HAC. And this is listing Rev1. Is there a different rev? I, I don't remember if I saw a rev information on this thing. No, there's no rev, so it's it's most likely rev one. If it's not, and the BIOS won't work, it'll tell us so. Uh, let's see, drivers, CPU, where's downloads? BIOS. Okay, we've got, did I say F2? Yeah, F6 is the most recent. Let's get that. And of course it's in a zip file. Okay, um, flash drive. I'm plugging in a USB um, flash drive into the top. And this has a copy of Windows 10 on it but that doesn't matter. We're not going to be using it as an installer for Windows. Um, 
Okay, so did that show? I'm right-clicking and copying the, uh, the BIOS file. Going to this PC. Yeah, there's the D drive. Right-click and copy. Paste. Sorry, paste. Uh, unexpected error keeping you from writing the file? Huh. Oh, the D drive disappeared. It's not there anymore. Although it looks like it's trying to copy over to it. Oh, it came back. Weird. Okay, is it there? Yes. There's, a, there's another... Um, um, BIOS here from an Asus. I'm just going to delete. Doesn't need to be there. Okay. But let's restart the computer and go into the BIOS and we'll see about upgrading the BIOS. Maybe that'll help the, um, the blue screening problem. It won't help the, um, the overheating problem. But if we can get this thing to run stably playing a game, that's mainly what I'm concerned with. Although I would like to, uh, to see it not blue screen. Um, ideally, with the RAM clocked at 3600 megahertz. All right, press and delete on the keyboard to get it to go into the BIOS. Oh, Chris says he doesn't think this will work because it's an OEM um, created. Uh, it's a board. It's a gigabyte board, but it's created from. Um, for OEMs, which is um, like a, a separate company to put it in their computers. Um, well, if it, if it doesn't work, it, it'll come up and say, no, it's not right. So F8, we're going to update the BIOS and we're going to point it at the BIOS file and go. Are you sure you want to update the BIOS? Yes. Let's see what happens. It's not complaining. I think it's going to be okay. Press to start. Sure, why not? There we go. So if this didn't work, what I would do is um, go to the iBuyPower website, their support section, and look for a BIOS update for this particular computer. Arnold Albert. I replaced a failing mechanical hard drive with Windows 8 uh, with a 2.5 SSD loaded Windows 10. While downloading and installing updates, I noticed the PC now becomes laggy. Moving the mouse takes time. YouTube videos are laggy. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I would look for driver updates and a BIOS update. to hopefully fix that. So moving the mouse around, uh, another thing you could try is plugging the mouse into a different port on the computer. But I would think more than likely a BIOS update or driver updates would, uh, would fix it. And I don't mean just for the mouse, but like the graphics, um, sound, network, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, you know, as, as much as you can update, update, and see if the problem goes away. You could also disconnect the solid state drive, put back in your hard drive, and see if uh, if the problem is now in, in Windows 8. So something, something else could have gone wrong. It's an Asus, I'm sorry, it's an HP laptop. Yeah, look for a BIOS update. But also try the mouse in a different um, a different spot. Or are you talking about the trackpad? If it's a trackpad, definitely look for um, an updated uh, trackpad driver. Another thing you can do with trackpads, uh, if you go into Device Manager, find where the trackpad is, 
right click on it, go to drivers, and try changing the driver from what it is right now to a more basic one. Um, sometimes it'll get rid of um, weird problems like that. Okay, so it's we're restarting the computer after the BIOS update. Trackpad. Well, another test. Um, if the trackpad's having a problem, try plugging in an external mouse and see if it's laggy. Okay, should be getting video back here. And this is, this is not unusual for a BIOS update, uh, for the video to take longer than usual to, to come back. And sometimes the computer, you'll hear it turn itself on and back off a couple of times. Just be patient with it. There's video. Delete. Yeah, the BIOS update um, yeah, changed the layout of, uh, of the BIOS, um, the screens and everything. So the default speed on the RAM is 2400 megahertz, and that's where it's running right now. I'm going to leave it like that, and we're going to F10 and exit. Let's save and exit. We're going to try um, Prime95 with the RAM not, uh, not overclocked and see what happens. Oh yeah, how's what Lo-Fi Girl doing? She's fine. She's still playing. Oh, y'all can see her back there. Yeah, the laptop. Looks like just reseeding the RAM on that uh, that Nitro um, Acer Nitro laptop fi uh, fixed the blue screens. Okay. Okay, quitting out of Discord. Going back to downloads, and we are going to run Prime95 again. That's a zip file. We want a non-zip file, yes. And we're going to disable the, uh, the AVX again to keep the temperatures down. And hardware info 64. Run it. Start. Right. No, I I realize it's not just the um, it's not just the uh, the trackpad or the mouse that's having the problem because YouTube is also um, laggy, freezing, as you say, um, and definitely do do update the um, the BIOS on the on the motherboard, but don't don't overlook um, seemingly unrelated um, driver issues. You any any kind of a driver or anything you connect to the computer can cause problems. Seems to be preoccupied detecting ATA SCSI drives. Huh. It's just not responding. 
All right, let's try quitting out of that and we'll relaunch it. Huh, okay, well, right click on start and go to task manager and we'll see if we can kill it from there. Or did it finally give up? No, nope, it's still going. There it is. End task. That's really stuck. There it goes. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Okay. And we are at 76 degrees Celsius. So that's with AVX turned off. Yeah. Okay, that's good. It doesn't look like it's going to go up into the 80s again. And almost certainly not 90s. But we're checking for stability. Um see if it's going to blue screen again. And right now we don't have the RAM overclocked. It's running at 2400 megahertz. We'd like to get it to run at 3600 megahertz. Mose, why not use simple hardware info? Um... I don't know. I mean, I kind of assume that hard hardware HW Invo and HW Info 64 were made by the same company, are they not? Little Smoke says, can you lock it at 3200 megahertz? Yeah, we probably could. You can go in, uh, like, manually set the... Um, uh, the frequency and the timings and the voltage and all that. The great thing about um, uh, XMP is it's um, it's tested to run at the uh, the speeds and the timings and the voltages that um, that they say it will. And the uh, there's a chip on the uh, on the RAM stick, excuse me, that um, just puts in all the information, all the all the settings for you in the BIOS. Uh, ooh, Little Smoke says a 11400F only supports max of 3200 MHz. Okay. Did not know that. So an 11400F, let's see, it's it's sitting at 79 degrees C, so much much better. It, it shouldn't it shouldn't over overheat at this point. Um, let's see, center. Uh, let's go. Oop. I gotta take this, y'all. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I was going to go here, and let's look that up. It's not that I don't believe you all. I'm, I'm sure that Intel says that on their website, 
but has anyone else actually tried it and got it to work is my question. Um, so it is a 10, I'm sorry, 11 400 F at 3600 megahertz RAM. People on Reddit talking about it. Got some YouTube videos about it. Ooh, Tom's Hardware Forum. Why my RAM working at 3200 megahertz instead of 3600 megahertz? Okay, tech reviewer, choosing the best RAM for your 11400F. Uh, looks pretty generic. I think this is just like a, it's not a, it's not a link farm, but it's it's basically like an affiliate thing. They're just linking to, to things you can buy and then they get a percentage. Eurogamer.net, memory bandwidth analysis. Let, let's accept all those cookies. Looks like they got it to run. I'll tell you what, we'll try it. If it's still blue screens, we can knock it down to 3200 megahertz and call it a day. Yeah, it looks like it maxed out at um, 82 degrees C, which is, that's fine. All right, back here and POV. There we go, okay. Let's just try it. Closing out. Um, Stopping Prime 95. And let's reboot and turn it back on. I'm hoping the RAM or the BIOS upgrade fixed the, um, fixed the issue we were having before. What is it idling at? Um, I didn't even look at that. Sorry, Chris. I just rebooted. Dion Knight. Yeah, ask anything you want about uh, anything. We talk about non-computer stuff. I was pressing delete on the wrong keyboard. And I grabbed the wrong mouse. There we go. Okay, when it gets back in, we're going to restart it. Um, we can kind of, we can see the idle temperature in the, uh, in the BIOS. I guess it's not true idle because nothing's running, like nothing in Windows is running, but yeah. it'll be close. All right, we're in. Uh, okay, so where is the XMP stuff here? Um, I think maybe it's in advanced mode. F2 or clicking here gets you there. Yeah, okay. So XMP, it's disabled. We're going to 
enable it. 3600 megahertz at 18, 22, 22, 42, 64 at 1.35 volts. Um, F10 to save and exit. Booting into Windows. Yeah, a little smoke. That's what we'll do. If if 3600 megahertz uh, still crashes, we'll knock it down to 3200. Back to downloads and Prime 95, that's the zip file, Prime 95 folder. And disabling AVX to keep it cooler. And hardware info 64. Yeah, there's hardware info 64 and hardware in info 32. Back in. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's stop that and find the idle temperature Chris was asking about. That's a good question. Close out of that and let it come back to idle temperature. Control Shift Escape to bring up Task Manager. And let's see. What's going on with performance? Looks like with nothing really running, it's in the mid 40s, which is not great. Um, idle temperature uh, with a decent cooler should be in the 30s. And it's even go up, going up to 50 a little bit. So it's, this is not a good cooler. We're just trying to see if it's good enough for this person and the way they use the computer. No, no reason to, to spend extra money. Um, if we can get it stable and at a decent temperature under a ridiculously overdone stress test like Prime 95. All right, back to Prime 95. Let's run it again. And I thought I had exited that, did I not? Disabling AVX. There we go. Okay. All right, so now let's see if it crashes again. Yep, 30 degrees, low 30s is good for idle. I agree, Chris. Mm-hmm. Under 85 in prime is decent. They should have spent the money on a good cooler. This cooler came with the computer. Um, it's a I buy power um, uh, pre-built computer. If they, if it turns out, if it turned out they did need a new cooler, we could uh, get them something for probably about sixty bucks that would do a, a fine job with this processor. I think it's going to be okay though.
Dion Knight, I'm disabled but like fixing computers, but almost every time I go on a job, the people do like I don't know what you're doing. Uh, that's that's too bad. Um, where, where are you in the in the world, Dio? Or, sorry, Dion? Dion, sorry. Hey, Simon. Thank you. Simon's in the UK. But where, where are you at, Dion? I wonder if there's any kind of um, governmental help for for that kind of an issue. People thinking you don't uh, don't know what you're doing because you're disabled. Uh, USA says which laptop is best to buy. Well, that is a complex question. I tell you, I get that question a lot on here, and the answer is it depends. It depends a lot. Budget, where you are in the world, um, what you need the computer for. I mean, it's that is not a simple, simple answer. Not to jinx it, but this is probably the longest it's gone without blue screening. And Lo-Fi Girl right there is still still chilling on the. Uh, um, on the Nitro 5 laptop. <laughs> the one you can afford, Chris says. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, I've, I, have, I have some clients with um, a lot of money, and they tend to buy um, gaming laptops, even though they don't game. Um, so there, there, is, there is such a thing as buying more computer than you need. HP, Acer, or Asus. Of those, HP. Because HP um, gives service manuals. Them and Dell and Lenovo all give service manuals for most of their computers. And that's a big help when opening them up to, to try and figure out what's wrong with them. Um, Dell and HP, for me, in the US, um, it's easier to get replacement parts for them because so many of them are sold. there ends up being a, a usually a good collection of used parts available for replacements. Dion Knight, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I have I have a friend from Trinidad. Um, I, I don't I don't know he I, I don't want to say any more any more about that because I, I don't know. I'd be I'd be saying something else that something you know something that someone else told me. Blue screen. Clock clock uh, watchdog timeout. Okay. So it did blue screen, and that's a perfect segue to stop talking about uh, other countries and problems they have. So we are um, pressing delete. I mean, I'm in the United States of America. We, we have we have problems too. Okay, delete to go into the BIOS. Let's see about getting this thing running at 3200 megahertz. So it's um, 1822, 22, 42, 64, and at 1.35 volts. So ideally we would plug those numbers in manually with the exception of uh, having the memory run at 3200 megahertz and we'll see if it's stable but just make a note here 18 22 22 42 40 or 64 okay all right over to profile and disable it and now we get to figure out where the settings are. Um, could they be under settings? Or tweaker? Tweaker. Tweaker makes sense. Uh, advanced memory settings, yes. Oh, there's also the, the multiplier here. So here we can put in the, the 3200 megahertz. So 3200 megahertz. And advanced memory timings. Uh, memory channel timing? Yeah. So we're looking at 1822. Those actually look right. Those look right already. 
Okay, I think the timings are good. But we need to find the, the voltage setting. Um, let's go back one, go back down. Advanced voltage settings is probably where they are. Uh, DRAM. Hmm. Where is DRAM voltage? Dynamic V core. Oh, DRAM voltage. There it is. And the RAM can run it up to 1.35 volts. So we're going to give it all the voltage we can. All right. So F10 to save and exit. Is anyone screaming in chat? Don't do that. Um, I don't have. I there's there's two Chris. There's two sticks of 3600 RAM in there. It's brand new. So I'm I'm thinking the RAM's probably okay. It's just um, if Intel says it shouldn't run at 3200 or 3600 megahertz, or you know the max is 3200 megahertz, we're gonna go with that and see if it uh, if it runs without blue screening. I do need to get more um, more DDR4 RAM. Um, I've got some more laptop RAM coming, but I need some spares around here. I generally have spares. I ended up using it all without ordering more, so that's my bad. Yes, it should run, but the RAM could be faulty right out of the box, that's true. Mem test eighty six. That would be something to try. A message about a USB device not being recognized. I think I still have my flash drive in the top of the computer. Uh, there's no option to eject it. It's not being seen. I'm just going to pull it out. Okay, back to downloads. And Prime 95. Run it. Turning off AVX. And we'll see what happens. Hardware info, run it. Cool. Yeah, the timings are right here. They're correct. Uh, I'm, yeah, I just looked at that. <laughs> yeah, if you if you scroll down, it shows the it shows the timings here. Where the timings go? There's the timings. Uh yeah, 1600 megahertz. We double that with uh, double data rate gives you 3200. So it's it's running at 3200 megahertz with the correct timings. Does Task Manager show uh, show RAM timings? Right clicking on Start and Task Manager. Is it under Performance? 
Oh yeah, there it is, 3200 megahertz. I don't see the timings here, but that's cool. I didn't, uh, I don't think I'd noticed that before, the, the RAM speed being shown. Oh yeah, the um, the graphics card came with some Zotac gaming uh, stickers and product registration info. That's cool. I tend not to think about um, things like that with lower end CPUs. Um, another thing I ran into a couple of times is if you get a Core i3 processor, and I don't know if this is true across all you know Intel processors and uh, platforms, you know with the different motherboard and chipsets and things like that. But um, a couple of times when I got uh, Core i3 processors for people, um, the top M.2 slot, the one nearest to the processor, didn't work. And that's because the um, uh, the Core i3 processors, at least the ones, the two that I had the problem with, didn't provide PCI Express lanes um, for that slot. This is not a huge problem. You just put it into a um, um, M.2 NVMe slot lower on the board that goes to the chipset, and you're good. But yep, 3060 Ti. Updated the BIOS, same thing. Uh, Arnold, I would I would open it up, put back in your hard drive with Windows 8, and see if the problem um, goes away. It's possible there's just an incompatibility, something um, incompatible on the uh, on the system, um, incompatible with Windows 10. But that would be the next step. If it does work with the hard drive with with Windows 8, you could re um, Re-image the um, the hard drive to the solid state drive. Run it in Windows 8 and see if the problem goes away, and then upgrade it to Windows 10. If the problem happens again, then you you've got your answer. It's it's something with Windows 10 and that computer not playing right with each other. Little Smoke says 11th and 12th don't have that issue. Okay. Uh, and Chris says he thinks that's only a problem with 10th gen and 11th gen boards. Okay, I don't, I don't remember if that was the case when I, I had the issue or not, but I wouldn't be surprised. Chris, can you think of anything else for um, Arnold to try with his um, his laptop uh, having a uh, laggy trackpad and uh, really slow playing video on YouTube? Should we switch to the new AM5 when it comes? I mean, internet slow. He he um, he has a. It, it's it's two different things. It's like his trackpad, um, moving the mouse around with the trackpad is slow, and video slow. Those are the two um, symptoms he's shared so far. 
and apparently it wasn't happening while he had a hard drive in his computer um, running Windows 8. But I mean that's that that is certainly something to to check for the um, the slow playing video. The trackpad being wonky is another thing. Mmm, so the hard drive was failing. Okay, here here's another thing you could try. So you um you 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 cloned everything from a failing hard drive to a new solid state drive and now you're having problems. What about reinstalling Windows 10 over the top of the current install of Windows 10? And by by that I mean um, creating yourself a USB flash drive by going to Google. You type in download Windows 10 and that will link you over to a Microsoft website where you can download an installer on, onto a USB flash drive for Windows 10. Um, you run the setup.exe from your from inside your existing Windows 10. That will upgrade you uh, to the latest version of Windows 10, and it may fix the problem because it will also replace um, uh, the version of Windows with the new version. Could that would be something to try? And that's Chris just just said the same thing. You and me, Chris, we're like we're we're like this. Yep, I that I, I would not be surprised if that fixed the problem. No blue screen. It's been a while. <laughs> hey, a little smoke. So you okay? So you did not clone the uh, the uh, the copy of eight? Did you did you do like a, a clean install of Windows ten after you put the solid state drive in? Is that what happened? Clean install of Windows 10. Hmm. Well, dang. So you've updated drivers, updated the BIOS, you tried, um, yeah, drivers. Um, you, you've tried um, switching the driver for the trackpad to the more basic one instead of the uh, the. the the sin was it synology yeah uh, something like that try it I, I think you said you tried all that hmm mm -hmm. good question are you just relying on Windows 10 to get the drivers, or did you go to the manufacturer? Yeah, and that manufactures HP. Try another SSD. I mean, that would be that would be strange, um, strange symptoms for an SSD to cause. But I've seen weirder things. Okay, so if, if you if you're relying on Windows 10 to get the drivers, don't do that. Go to the HP website for the for the model and get the drivers from there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, blue screen. So it blue screened even at, even running at 3200 megahertz. Okay. I am thinking take out the new RAM, put in the old, and see if it still blue screens. Because like I said, this could have been a, a pre-existing problem that the end user thought getting more RAM and a new graphics card would fix. That's not necessarily the case. Okay. Computer is off. side panel. Okay, we're leaving the side panel off for now. I was just trying to put the back on it. Alright, taking out the RAM. slot. I'm going to put it in the second slot because I think that's correct. Alright, coming back on. Moe's, what PSU? Not sure. It's black. It doesn't have any markings I can see on it. Oh, I was pressing the wrong button on the keyboard. Clicking and going to Task Manager, Performance, Memory, it's running at 3200 megahertz. Because that's what we set it to um, in the BIOS. So the original RAM was supposed to run at 3000 megahertz. I'm going to restart the computer, go into the BIOS, and um, set XMP to on and let it run at the, uh, the speed it's, uh, it's supposed to. So, GTA 5 is nine years old. Yeah. I forget what they said, 2024 or 2025. Um, okay, so, I'm going to change the XMP to profile 1. So 3000 megahertz at 16, 18, 18, 38, 57 at 1.35 volts. F10 to save and exit. And we will boot back into Windows and run the stress test again. Abby's cooking something. It smells good. I think it might be chorizo egg potato. That's what it smells like.
All right, back to stress testing. Uh, Arnold, that sounds like good, uh, good advice to me. Fresh install again on, on the solid state drive, only get the drivers from HP site. Yep. Lo-fi girl still doing good in the background. Yeah, little smoke. That I'm, I'm, I'm positive that's it. They, they don't want to compete with their cash cow, GTA Online at the moment. If they're, if, if they've got themselves a, a cash cow and it's just pumping out cash for them, it would, it wouldn't be smart to put out a new game at this point financially. Well, let's, um, while we wait for this thing to, to crash again, um, I'm gonna see about taking this uh, old Asus laptop apart. Um, let me see. Let's go to head mounted. So this laptop, um, client brought me, she and her husband, several years ago, bought um, two of these. Um, he passed years ago, and she, hers, this one, no, actually, this is this is the other one, um, hers really fell apart, and the, uh, the solid state drive, or any drive in it, um, would sometimes just uh, not be detected, and I tried all kinds of stuff to try and make it work consistently. What we ended up doing is transferring her drive over to her husband's laptop, which is this, and that got the computer basically up and running. But she since bought a new laptop and we've got her stuff moved over. So she just asked me to open this up and uh, delete the data on the drive and then do whatever I want to with it. So let's see, Asus laptop, integrated keyboard. So yeah, should just be taking all the screws out of the bottom and getting it separated.
Dave Hall just watched a video of J. Sussen's concern removing old built-up driver residue from computers. It was about a year old. Went to a couple of areas to clean out, including registry. Okay. I like Jay. Wow. That screw's just turning. Alright. I think they may have to take that off. I'm not sure yet. Drive not coming out. Okay. Let's see if we can get this thing separated. Aha, uh -huh. okay, I remember this one. It's kind of a, it's an older design where the the bottom doesn't come off, the, the palm rest does. And then it's got cables leading down for the track pad and the um, keyboard. I have to reach in and undo the, undo the cables. And there it is. And the problem that, um, that I kept running to it with the drive disconnecting had something to do with this connection here. Is it's an unusual design. It's got the motherboard. It's got a little daughter board that connects to the motherboard just with a little um, sandwiching connector, and then this comes over and uh, this is how you this is how it gets connected to the to the drive, solid state drive in this case. But something here messed up on the other one. Just was so inconsistent. Okay, so also I have to take this guy out. This other little daughter board that has card reader, audio, and USB has to come out. Alright, so there's a little clip here you have to kind of pull back and there we go. Then the drive should come out. So it's a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. Um, Let's see, how old is this thing? It's from 2019, it's not too old. It might be okay to use again, but I definitely need to uh, erase the files that are on it. And I will do that with my diagnostic computer. Um, the RAM is built in to the motherboard. I think that's all we really need to get out of this. Yeah, we'll let the rest of this go. Diagnostic computer coming up. Still has it blue screened, and this is with um, this is with the original RAM. So the the new RAM could could be one of them could be um, failing, or it could be a weird compatibility issue. It's kind of hard to say. Or it, it may just not have blue screened yet. Maybe it'll it'll blue screen here in a little bit. All right, I need to move around some windows though. Put that guy there, and this guy here, and 
I'm just freeing up a monitor so I can switch it over to my uh, diagnostic computer. HDMI. So let's run a data recovery software. Damage partition recovery. Um, oh, it would help if I plugged in the. <laughs> okay. So SATA data. SATA power. And it sees it. There it is. Okay. That's. <coughs> back to home or oh, refresh list here we go all right so Samsung Drive OSF open <coughs> and this is gonna let us just um oh wait a minute we're not recovering we are deleting stuff so we don't need to be in here at all um, okay I'll quit out of that one as soon as I can let me close we really just need to go into um, something like data lifeguard and um, run the erase on it she doesn't need her files. She's already got them. My brain was going ahead to the next computer where we actually do need to get files off of a hard drive. Or files off of a drive. I haven't opened it yet. I don't know if it's a hard drive or a solid state drive. Alright, but yeah. Here we go. Data Lifeguard. You can get this, uh, if you do a search for WDC Data Lifeguard on Google, you can find a link to it. It's a free program. It tests drives, hard drives and solid state drives, and also allows you to erase them. All right, let's quit out of that, didn't need that. So right clicking on the drive, it's a Samsung. Run diagnostics and we want to do an erase. It warns you several times, are you sure you wanna do this? Defaults to quick. What that does is it, um, it deletes the, the part of the drive where the information of file location is but it doesn't actually delete everything on the drive. You want full erase if you really want to or really erase a drive. And here we go. Shouldn't take too long um, on a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. Game replays the laptop they're talking about as an HP. Little Smoke, would you buy the new iPhone? I wouldn't, because I don't buy uh, Apple products. Hey, Paulo. So, Jay found that um, crappy, uh, crappy drivers left behind were causing blue screen errors. Okay. It blue screened. This time it's machine check exception. So it's blue screening even even with the um, even with the old RAM. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if um, this was the issue that they they wanted to uh, upgrade the RAM and the graphics card trying to fix. Well we could put in another drive, reinstall Windows 10, and see if uh, see if that clears up the problem. Clears up the blue screen and error. Zulu says, why are people so afraid to format? It's likely the most refresh refreshing method. Uh, Chris says reset BIOS to defaults and run mem test. Well, we um, we upgraded the BIOS. That would have reset it back to defaults, correct? And what's the odds that the the original RAM plus the two two um, 
um, new sticks are are all bad. What's your thinking there, Chris? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't have another M.2, and I don't want to go erasing, uh, formatting the, the guy's drive, uh, the kid's drive, um, just on the off chance it might fix it. Let's see, do I have any any NVMEs that I'm just not thinking of is the, the next question. Let's see, maybe I do and I'm, I'm just not, not remembering. Let's check. No, there's not one there. I think all the NVMe drives I have are um, like little cache drives, like 16 gigabytes. Ooh, I have a Samsung one terabyte NVMe sitting in here, which I totally did not remember. Let's try it. So I'm gonna shut the computer down. I'm gonna take out the client's NVMe drive. We're gonna put this one in. We're gonna reinstall Windows and see if the blue screening goes away. I'm just shutting down the computer. Uh, oh crap. Did I abort it? I think I aborted it. Uh, accidentally by pressing the wrong uh, keyboard. Yeah, I did. I pressed escape on the keyboard. Okay, let's let's run that full erase again. That was my bad. Okay. Um, all right, back to head mounted. I got a message I gotta check. Sorry, guys. Uh, why is the screen so freaking dark on my phone? Oh, no, that's fine. Okay. keyboard plugged in. Alright. Okay, so we are removing the client's M.2 which is a MSI brand M390 500 gigabyte. We're going to put in this uh, Samsung one terabyte. Okay, that's in. We're sticking with one sticker RAM because it was blue screening with all three RAM sticks we tried. Actually, we don't need internet. We'll need to take it away because Windows, Windows 11. Oh crap! Do I have a copy of Windows 11 that I know where it is? Is the next question. Uh, that's 10. That's 10. I think this is 11. We'll see. All right. Okay, powering on. 
for gigabyte is it uh, F8 or F12 to get into uh, the boot menu. Oh, apparently we got a copy of Windows here already. Uh, yeah, so it's it's getting devices ready. Okay, it just says Dell. I, I think this is probably a, um, a test one that I used. Yeah, it's got Heaven Benchmark on it. Um, okay, so it's just going to detect hardware. Go look in Device Manager. Okay, let me move to... Move back to tripod. So this is a solid state drive that I put in a computer and I was using it as a test drive, basically. Um, the computer that I was trying it in was having problems. I don't remember what the problems it was having, but um, I did a clean reinstall of Windows 10 on it. And yes, this is Windows 10, so, I mean, it's not Windows 11, but I would think that if it didn't blue screen with a, a clean install of Windows 10, it wouldn't also if uh, we clean installed Windows 11. It's not the best test, but we're going with it. So other devices, it, it found a couple of things already and uh, filled them in. Uh, this simple PCI device, this is probably a chipset thing from Intel, yeah, 8086. Um, let's see. Had I already downloaded, uh, yeah, hardware info? And apparently I was testing a graphics card because I've got Unigen Heaven and AMD Adrenaline software. Uh, that's the wrong one. Hardware info, info 64. Sensors only. And let's go get... Prime 95. That is the wrong keyboard. Again, I I almost stopped the erase again. Uh, okay, so it's it's loading driver for the graphics card right now. There we go. Okay. But Prime 95 download. Sixty-four bit. Opening it up. A <laughs> gamer plays. It's two nineteen a.m. where you are. Wow. Run anyway. Uh. It says it can't proceed because libcurl x64 dll was not found. Reinstalling the program may fix it. Interesting. Okay. I don't think I've seen that before. I'm getting the 32-bit version. not wanting to run Prime 95. The 32-bit version just isn't starting. Huh. I extracted it again and it ran. I don't know what happened there. RAM is at 3200 megahertz with the correct timings. No, that would be that would be that would be faster than it should be. So right now the RAM is actually overclocked. It should be running at 3000 megahertz. Unless I'm remembering wrong. It's very possible I'm remembering wrong. It's 
not a great test though. We we got the stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna restart it. We're gonna make sure the the RAM timings are are correct for this stick of RAM in the BIOS. Not only the timings, but the uh, the megahertz and the um, the voltage. All right, going back into the BIOS. Why does my PC slow down during Zoom classes? I don't know. In, in what way is it slow? Like what uh, what function is slow? Well, it is set. Oh, the memory multiplier is at 3200. I need to set back that back to auto. So the XMP profile was correct but I had manually set it to uh, to auto or to at uh, the 3200 megahertz. The DRAM voltage I had also set it to 3.5. I tell you what, let's do let's do save and exit. We're gonna load optimized defaults, which should set all that stuff back to the correct, and come back and do. XMP profile one, 3000 megahertz. And F10, F10, not F11. All right, and I'm gonna go back in and make sure it's it actually is running at 3000 megahertz before I let it boot into Windows again. Yes, Dave. I, I, I expected that to, to do it as well. That's the point of the XMP profile, that it, it would change all the other settings uh, to what it should be, according to XMP, but it did not. Um, okay, so back to F2 for advanced. And yeah, there it is. Um, 3000 megahertz, 8 gigabytes of RAM. And... Yeah, that's good. So F10 again, save and can, and exit. All right, we'll go back in. We'll run the stress test again. Yeah, one of the, one of the things about computers, just because they they are supposed to do things, doesn't mean that they will. <laughs> so you, there, there's a lot of extra checking you have to do. All right, back to stress test. Hey Goliath Gaming. <laughs> Zulu says make sure you have a, a valid reason. Uh, were were y'all talking? I, I, I completely missed y'all talking about BIOSes. Zulu, no, it uh, it's not just when it reaches 100 degrees. Um, the first time it crashed after we uh, started testing it, it crashed right as it got to, to the high 90s, but that was a kind of a happenstance. Um, once we made it so that the uh, the CPU wouldn't overheat, it's still blue screened. Dave, are you familiar with the display driver uninstaller? Yes, um, I, I think uh, I think I saw Jay use that a few times. Chris, as a baseline, disable XMP and run test again. Yeah, that's a good idea. Probably should do that.
Okay, so yeah, here's here's the the memory timings, um, correct timings, correct uh, megahertz. So we've got it running at um, the XMP profile for the original RAM. Dave Hall, fast boot on or off? I usually have fast boot turned on. If you have weird problems where the computer doesn't shut down right or doesn't start up right sometimes, turning it off can help. Oh, let's get this thing. Right. I'm gonna go check on something. I'll I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Uh, still hasn't blue screened, I see. That's good. So Goliath, you had it off because of, because it was blue screening. That's interesting. I don't think I'd, I'd seen um, a blue screen error caused by fast boot. Dave, you mentioned, um, I think a few, maybe a few people mentioned um, Jay's video about cleaning out old drivers and the universal driver uninstaller. Um, was he using that to fix random blue screen on the computer like what we've got right here?
I'm pretty sure it was fast boot that my friend Israel had a problem with. He he had a system that um, every time he told the computer to shut off, it would just restart. Um, and turning, I'm pretty sure turning off fast boot fixed that problem. But I'm not familiar with all the different problems it uh, it can cause. So it was a blue screen error. Was it a blue screen error at boot? Or was it a blue screen error that uh, that happened kind of randomly after it was in Windows? Yes, Mose, that, that's exactly right. If, uh, if, if this thing doesn't blue screen, we're going to put in the new RAM and see if we can get it to uh, during games it was happening. And turning off fast boot fixed it. Huh, I wouldn't have thought that. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. We're, right now we're ruling out um, problems with either that solid state drive or the copy of Windows or a driver loaded. Something, something else may, have, uh, may be going on causing the blue screens other than an actual hardware failure. So that's what we're ruling out with this uh, different solid state drive and a, a, a different copy of Windows. Okay, during games was a clearing out of old drivers. Okay, so that was Universal Driver Uninstaller. I, I do remember watching that video with Jay. Okay, so deleting drivers in safe mode and then using manufacturer only drivers. Okay. In situations like this, so if it turns out that um, it doesn't blue screen with this other solid state drive, other copy of Windows, if it doesn't blue screen, I'm, I'm more along the lines of the way of thinking, especially on a gaming computer, which is really, for the most part, just a bunch of games you have to reinstall. A clean reinstall um, on the client solid state drive, making sure we back up his files first, and then reloading drivers and reloading program, um, games would, is the correct way to do it, in, by my way of thinking. Because let's say that we go through the process of doing um, driver cleanup and maybe it, it, it stops the blue screens. There may be other problems in the copy of Windows um, that we don't fix in that, as opposed to like a clean install, all fresh, good to go kind of way of thinking about it. Let me go check something again.
so um, the Acer Nitro 5 is still doing fine back there. Y'all can see her. Um, she's uh, she's still listening to, to music and writing in her uh, in her journal or whatever she's doing. Um, so that that computer is fine. The um, let's do this real quick. The erasing of the drive is just about done. So this is the solid state drive that came out of the old laptop. Um, this is not failed. I'm I'm going to leave this just running. I'm hoping it's uh, it's it's uh, it's fine and I can continue. But I do need to go. I got to go pick up a friend. Um, I'll try and come back in about an hour, hour and a half, and restart the stream. If I can't, if it just doesn't work out, I'll do it. Um, I'll restart the stream tomorrow in the morning, as early as I can I can manage, and we can continue this thing. But yeah, thanks everybody for coming and hanging out and helping out. I mean, y'all y'all are great with suggestions. I mean, it's sometimes y'all throw things at me that I I just don't think of, and you know they they very often come out to be uh, good uh, good suggestions and solve problems. Um, and Dave has errands to run also in Biomos. And uh, thanks everybody else. Um, Chris, you're you're great as always. Um, Zulu and yeah, just, just everybody. Yeah, so I'll be back in an hour or two or tomorrow in the morning. But uh, y'all have a good rest of your day otherwise if I don't see you again.